Eric Adams is the 110th and current mayor of America's most populous city, New York. Prior to his historic election, Adams was an NYPD officer, state senator, and Brooklyn borough president. He was elected at an unprecedented time while the city was reeling from the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic, addressing critical issues around race relations and one of the most politically polarizing times in our country's history. His focus on combating crime has been a cornerstone of his agenda, which now includes an urgent situation involving migration. Mayor Adams, thank you very much for joining this thank iteration you. of the Swift Hour. Thank you. Uh, great to be here. You recently came out very publicly and called out the federal government for what you saw as really lacking in terms of how they are dealing with this migration crisis that's existing in the country. And that really stood out to me because um, I, I thought it was very important for you uh, to, to, call, to call this urgent uh, action. What are you asking the federal government or what are you wanting them to do? I think it's crucial that we are clear because uh, people wanted to misuse my quotes and I was very clear. Uh, it's not the migrant, the uh, asylum seeker. Uh, that is not our problem. Uh, the issue is our problem and it's a global problem. There's a global mig migration taking place across the globe. <clears throat> and part of the conversations that are going to come out today and throughout this UN week is the wars, the famine, the uh, changing political climates, that people are migrated and it's impacted many cities in general, but specifically New York City. It's a national and global problem. Local cities should not handle that. Number one, we believe the federal government should call it state of emergency. This will free up resources for uh, cities like mine, Houston, El Paso, et cetera. Two, they should fund this. This is going to cost us $5 billion, and that $5 billion is going to come from somewhere. It's going to come from the resources of those entities that have been struggling after uh, uh, pre -pandemic, post pandemic. And then we believe we need to have a real decompression strategy that spreads this throughout the entire United States, not just a few cities in the state. And we believe this could be done. And if it's treated with that level of urgency, not a policy, this is urgency. We believe we can minimize the impact on cities. This is wrong for migrants to live this way. And it's long for the residents of long-term cities to live this way. Can you give, give some context to the scale of this? I mean, you say $5 billion, and I think that is an incredible <laughs> sum of money. How, what, 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 give us a sense of just the scale of what's happened in New York and why it's so expensive. Yeah, and that's, that's so important. Uh, New York City has a $106 billion budget, but approximately $76 billion of that budget is already accounted for. You can't do anything with it, it's mandated. So at, out of the $30 billion le left, $5 billion of, th of those dollars are going to have to be dealt with this crisis in this year. And unlike Washington, we must have a balanced budget for two years. That's by law. So not only are we going to, going to have to deal with $5 billion, but it's going to be a total of $12 billion out of that $30 billion. Now we must look, where is that money coming from? We have to look at our social services, our school programs, uh, costs to clean our streets, all of those things that allow a city to function. 110,000 migrants came to the city because they can't work. We have to pay for all of their services, food, shelter, um, medical costs, educating the children. Uh, over 20,000 children uh, that are in temporary housing. Many of them, most of them are migrant uh, young people. We have to absorb into our school system. And so when you do an analysis of this, analysis of this course, it's more than just the course of this issue. It's all the services that we're going to be taking away from those who have been struggling for a long time. We're getting 10 thousand migrants a month. Cost of hotel is ex 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 exceedingly high in New York City. We have to now move to, tent, to, to tents and encampments type settings. So it's going to change the actual structure of this city. And that is what we are really concerned about. What do you <clears throat> what do you want from New Yorkers? Uh, what do you what do you want them to because it's obviously this is taking away from fundamental services they're expecting to get as taxpayers. What do you say to them? And, and that is why I, I had to have a Roosevelt honest moment with New Yorkers, because New Yorkers, for the most part, are trying to put bread on the table, get to and from their place of employment and raise their children. 
They don't read the depths of editorial pages. They don't read um, all of this philosophical uh, concepts that we put in place. They're just trying to struggle every day to get, get ahead because it's really challenging right now for New Yorkers and Americans. And I needed an honest conversation with them to allow, to break through the noise and say, this can destroy our city if this is not under control. It's not too late to fix the problem, but it can't be a policy of ignoring the problem. So I'm saying to long-term New Yorkers, we all came from somewhere. Let's not turn against the migrant and asylum seekers because all of us, we all have a path of how we got here and we all participated in the pursuit of the American dream. But do you know the precursor to that dream is the right to work? No matter where you came from, your parents, your grandparents had the right to work. No matter how menial the job was, it gave you dignity that you were providing for your family. It is wrong not to give the migrants the same thing. When I spent the night in a, 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 a hurt humanitarian relief center with them and spoke with them throughout the night, they said, we don't want anything free. We want to work. That's all I hear from the migrants and asylum seekers. And that is what I'm telling New Yorkers. They want to contribute to our city. Let's embrace them. But let's also raise our voices and say we're supposed to get the support we deserve. Now, this is on the headlines uh, everywhere, but let's talk about the rest of your your focus areas. And how do you what do you see as some of the other most critical issues for your administration at this time? Well, we, you know, we're extremely excited. Uh, January 1st, 2022, we inherited a city that was coming out of um, COVID. Uh, it was challenging for the previous administration, all of us. And we focused on working families and working people. We had a working people agenda. We wanted to put money back in the pockets of everyday New Yorkers. We were able to do that with a series of initiatives uh, that uh, we were able to implement. But it was also my belief through my years of public service as a police officer and as a lawmaker that we had to go upstream. You know, Archbishop Desmond Tutu say, we spent a lifetime pulling people out of the river that to go upstream and prevent them from falling in. That is what we did. Dyslexia screening for our children so we don't have 30% of our inmates having uh, dysle being dyslexic. Uh, we focus on foster care children and paying for their college tuition. We brought crime down, uh, homicide, shooting. We got, we got people back on our subway system because we had a subway safety plan that really focused on that. We had around a, uh, a year education for our children, 110,000 children were able to go to school year round so we can get the learning loss that took place during COVID. And then some of youth employment, 100,000 100, youth, that was, was really different. Then we managed the economy. We received a double A bond rating because of how we manage uh, the financial interests of the city. 99% of the jobs we lost pre-pandemic are back. Tourism is back. There's an excitement in the city. You know, in spite of the large issue that's looming, we knew we had to still function and not just survive. We had to thrive, and the city is thriving. Now, the city really has come back, but, but talk about housing. It, it, the city's getting, it feels like the city's getting less and less affordable every single day. It seems to be getting more and more expensive to, to be in New York. What is your administration doing to address housing affordability? It is, it is getting extremely expensive, but you know, it is a supply and demand concept. If the supply is low, then the demand goes up and that is allowing those who are leveraging the demand to raise the cost of, of real estate. Now, let's be honest, building new real estate uh, you know, supplies cause a lot, supplies change, material cause a lot. So there is a natural adjustment. But the bottom line is we're dealing with an inventory crisis. Now, our administration, we were able to produce uh, 27,000, close to 27,000 uh, new af affordable uh, units, more affordable units. But we could do far more. We're a creature of our state government. We need them to be a partner and help us continue to do things like raising how high we can build buildings, turn our office spaces into housing. Uh, we have almost 138 million square feet of, of potential office space to use, but we also need to invest in NYCHA. We're the first administration that included NYCHA in our housing plan. We got the NYCHA land trust that is going to allow us to pump billions into the capital project of NYCHA. They have billions and billions of repairs that are outstanding. Uh, but the goal here is really to build more. We're going to do a, a massive rezoning change to allow us to build more throughout the entire five borough. There's a lot of areas in our city that historically 
we're not participating in affordable housing initiatives as much as they should. We want to change that. Let's, we're here in New York. It's the beginning of the UN General Assembly week. Now, I, I hope I'm not misstating this, but technically you're the host. <laughs> so so what what does your week look like during the UN General Assembly? It is from sunup to sundown. I start my 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 day after I uh, meditate and <laughs> exercise and smoothie. Then I come to one of my favorite people I could talk to on your show. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mr. Mayor, thank you so much. It's such an honor to be with you. And thank you for coming to the summit. Thank you. <laughs>